everybody welcome this is uh our inaugural brave new future on some of our new platforms tonight but this is episode 11 i hope you enjoy it i'm your host amber king and whenever uh the man behind the curtain is ready we're gonna get this kicked off so hit the like button share with some friends and uh hope you guys have a great weekend sounds good it'll be just a couple of minutes here we're waiting for rockfin to kick over hint hint rockfin yeah, if you haven't checked out Rockfin, go check it out. It's our new favorite place to be, for sure. And, uh, you know, promoting independent media all over the place. So as much as we can, it's, uh, it's a brave new future we face, and we need everybody's voices to be heard. Okay, live in five, four... You're on. Hello. Good evening, everyone. My name is Amber King. I am your host of Brave New Future. It is Friday night, 7 p.m. Pacific Coast time, and we have some amazing guests tonight. We have the lovely Stevie King joining us from Economics, And, of course, you guys all know Shanda Masta, the serious blonde, joining us as my co-host tonight. Welcome, ladies. How are you doing? Good, thank you. I'm excited Stevie's here with us. I didn't, this was a surprise. I came into the green room like, yay! It's gonna be a good show. Yeah, yeah, this is, know, so this I'm excited is to be here. episode number 11. So I'm excited uh, to be tonight on our new progressive, natural progressive Roar Media stream, as well as our home Roar Media Live. So welcome everyone. Thank you guys, and uh, yes, Brave New Future is a book title and uh, one of my favorite books. So I am a, a literary fan and I'm not sure what, if you're reading any books these days, Stevie, are, are you are you a reader? I definitely am. I've got my bookshelf behind me. Um, uh, recently, I uh, started reading some Chris Hedges, uh, yeah. bouncing around some of his books. Um, my Favorite Murder, uh, they, they made a book reading that so a little bit of this and that right on awesome yeah we love we love to share what books we're reading um i've been reading some cookbooks lately <laughs> <laughs> i've been reading a lot of manuals um i haven't been reading any of the novels that i've hoped to be reading um but i'm starting a good list actually a friend of mine just shared a few so i'm looking to pick those up not from lex luther if i can help it and uh you know I'm, I've been reading with my kids lately a bit too, since trying to trying to focus on that. Less YouTube videos, only for the adults. All right. <laughs> so, hope you guys are in for a good show tonight. Um, if you want to kick off some of the slides, thanks to everybody. I see you all: Snork, Franklin, Brent McKinney, Sirius. Welcome, everyone. Oh, we've got so many in the chat. Thanks, guys, for tuning in on a Friday night. I miss you guys. You know, usually I'm you, Jilly. Usually, uh, I was I spent my uh, COVID break and uh, spent that time doing lots of uh, daytime shows with everyone. So uh, now that I'm back to work, back back to the slave game, I'm uh, missing you all. So we miss you so much. Yeah, so this is our, um, you know, what's in the news today. If you want to click on that, little Amy Goodman, just kick us off. 
This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Today, climate and racial justice activists are joining unions and newly elected members of Congress to call on President-elect Joe Biden to address COVID, the economy, and climate change and appoint a, quote, corporate-free cabinet. Their push comes as Biden announced several new appointments Tuesday, including Louisiana Congress member Cedric Richmond to lead the White House Office of Public Engagement. The Sunrise Movement described the appointment of Richmond as a betrayal because he's the leading Democratic recipient into fossil fuel money in Congress. This comes as the Sunrise Movement and Justice Democrats are pushing the Biden team to place progressives in key cabinet positions. Their dream team includes Barbara Lee as Secretary of State, Elizabeth Warren as Treasury Secretary, Keith Ellison as Attorney General, Bernie Sanders as Secretary of Labor, Mustafa Ali as EPA Administrator, and Deb Haaland as Secretary of Interior. For more, we're joined by Walid Shahid, spokesperson for Justice Democrats. It's great to have you back with us. Can you talk, Walid, about what the response has been to the cabinet um, and the staff appointments so far? Begin with Cedric Richmond and your concerns. Yeah, I think progressives are upset with the appointment of Cedric Rip Richmond as one of the leading recipients of fossil fuel donations. He took money from the corporate packs of Exxon, Chevron, Valero just this past year. Um, and he is someone who his own constituents in New Orleans and Louise Louisiana have said have not taken the issue of regulating the fossil fuel industry, toxic pollution from the fossil fuel industry, and the climate crisis seriously. So, you know, we are concerned that uh, Representative Richmond has uh, was appointed to the inner circle. Steve Rochetti was also appointed to the inner circle. He is a big pharma lobbyist, um, has worked for groups who oppose allowing the government to manufacture prescription drugs and oppose Medicare for all. And now going forward, you know, we have heard news that Deb Holland is being um, considered for Secretary of the Interior. You know, I think this might have been leaked in response to the progressive outcry about these two more corporate friendly appointments. And looking forward, we really have to keep a tight eye and scrutiny over, you know, this this fight for the soul of the Biden presidency. Will they appoint um, all of these corporate friendly insiders or will they appoint significant numbers of progressives who make up, you know, ne nearly 40 percent of the seats of Democrats in the House are members of the progressive caucus. And so, you know, we think that we deserve adequate representation if Joe Biden wants to be a unity president and represent the entirety of the Democratic coalition. And Valid, on the basis of the appointments made so far, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about what you've just uh, uh, mentioned, the split within the Democratic Party between progressives and centrists. Yeah, how about that split? How are we feeling about uh, some more corporate corporate control for the chemical cartel on uh, in in amazing places in our government? Is that is that what we we wanted? Is that what we fought for? What do you guys think? Amy, go ahead. I mean, um, I'm definitely not okay with uh, uh, chemical companies having control over anything. I know when we had that big MCA gym spill here, the very first statement that our governor uh, put out was, uh, don't anybody think it was the coal company's fault? You know, that he wanted to make everyone rest assured that the, the coal companies weren't the ones doing this, but they were. And I have a picture of him with the chemical alliance zone that is signed from Governor Tomlin to them, a corporate PAC group. So you know exactly where he stands on that and the rest uh, of them too. Yeah, you know, they, they talk about the caucus being 40 percent progressives. What crap is that? You know, Harris called, considers herself a, a progressive in the progressive caucus. So yeah, that don't speak nothing to me. We have a little bit different values, I think, than yeah. than, than that arena. I, I don't even consider it even center. <laughs> right. So um, it's yeah, I, I mean, I'm honestly I'm not surprised um, a bit unfortunately, but, um, you know, it, it is what we're going to have to contend with and we're going to have to, you know, answer to that. And I'm, I'm concerned about what that's going to mean for my children, for the future, you know, for our planet, <laughs> something, you know, we might need our health, you know, in, in the time of pandemic and a, a global health crisis, nobody's ever talking about health and the impact of chemicals on our lives. They're only concerned with having chemicals 
help us. And that, mm-hmm. that is concerning to me. So yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be, you know, for people who care about the environment and care about, you know, taking care of themselves, it's gonna be a, a long few hauls. And I'm very concerned about what uh, Trump 2.0 looks like. Obama 2.0 is what this. Fucking yeah, is. this is Obama 2.0, and then oh, the, Biden after is what that, I call it. We get to look forward to even more. It's the O'Biden campaign, you know. I love that they're throwing <laughs> Hillary Clinton around for UN secretary, you know, because <laughs> we haven't bombed and fucked up another, you know, enough countries. I he- I heard Henry Kissinger's already pulling out. God, how is he still alive? How many freaking human sacrifice hearts has he got? I just want to know how the hell that guy is still alive. I think that just like roll him in, you know, like. Uh, Look at Pelosi, 80, Feinstein, 87. I'm not trying to be ageist, but there's a point where, come on, I will. I don't want my grandma to have the remote, let alone control of our country. And we've got multiple, multiple grandmas. No offense. (laughs) I'm a grandma. grandma. I'm a grandma. You can say that. I'm a grandma. Yeah, but but we have to look at, you know, how how and how long? How long have you been there? How many how many Don Youngs yes. do we need running around with guns that can't remember where their, you know, geriatric medicine is, let alone know how to ask questions about, you know, genetic testing. They're out and, of touch is what yeah. it is. They're completely out of touch with the generations and how the world is changing. I mean, they have no concept. Even Bernie, I love Bernie, but Bernie's out of touch. Bernie doesn't, you know, do social media and even understand where the, the Gen Z's and millennials are coming from. It's And if you can't see enough to understand what that means and why it's a problem, like, you know, I mean, that's 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 why, you know, certain people are capturing a lot of attention and able to connect those generationally but that is a rare rare needle in the haystack you know come on look at look at what's been happening for the last 20 years and imagine what the next 10 are going to do matt you know the word the wealth of the world is doubling like every 2.4 seconds now right can you imagine that and it's and that's an exponential you know, flow. The first time it doubled, I think it took like a hundred thousand years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, right. So there's no way the human brain can even keep up with. You know, we have we have little ant-sized memories at this point of of <laughs> what. All right, what Elon's happen. gonna make sure you can plug into an external hard drive and you're good to go. Yeah, well, we'll talk about some of that new, new tech future <laughs> right. coming up here. What else we got? Oz. I think I think I had a little. Uh, oh, was that oh. Pepe? <laughs> it was. Go back one. Go back. Go back. We need a little hopium. Hopium. <laughs> I I I think you know this is this is this is part of the daily news. This is where this is where we are at in the country. You know, um, symbols and you know very like simple <laughs> concepts. Are, are what's catching our, our eye. And the, I think that's part of it. You know, anxiety is through the roof and you've got all these different little camps just like trying to pick off their piece of the pie. So, you know, I, I understand it. I get it, you know, but we've had the real opium guarded by the CIA and, and our troops for, you know, 20 years. So what do we expect? Anyhow, we hopium. can move on unless you guys want to talk about Pepe and some hopium. No, no. So this is from my uh, adopted home state <laughs> and and John Young's, unfortunately. Um, but it's talking about the Arctic drilling that's uh, being pushed right now. Good times. In a last-ditch attempt to make good on promises to the oil and gas industry, the Trump administration is rushing to formalize plans to drill for oil in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge before Joe Biden takes office. On Tuesday, the Bureau of Land Management initiated the process with a formal call for nominations, inviting input on which land tracts should be auctioned off in the refuge's 1.5 meters acre coastal plain region. The call for nominations brings us one step closer to advancing this administration's policy of energy independence, said Chad Paget, the BLM Alaska State Director, in a statement. 
The call for nominations lasts 30 days, which would allow the Bureau to begin auctioning leases for land tracts to oil and gas companies just days before Biden's inauguration on 20 January. The coastal plain region, where land could be auctioned, is considered some of the country's last pristine wilderness, containing dozens of polar bear dens, essential migratory bird habitat, and caribou calving grounds held sacred to the Gwich'an people. Oil and gas drilling could wipe out polar bears on the coastal plain of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in our lifetimes, said Jamie Rappaport Clark, president and chief executive of Defenders of Wildlife, in a statement. Native communities in the region say they will also be disproportionately affected by the leasing of Arctic lands to oil and gas companies. The adverse impacts of oil development in these sacred and critical caribou calving grounds will be heavily felt by Gwich'an and Inupiat villages, said Jody Potts, Native Movement Regional Director, in a statement. As a Gwich'an person, I know my family's food security, culture, spirituality and ways of life are at stake. The rush to sell leases appears to be spurred by Biden's very different approach to public land management. He has promised to permanently protect the refuge and ban all new oil and gas leasing on public lands, making it unlikely that leases will be sold once Biden takes office. Even if the BLM holds an auction as early as the 17th of January, it's unclear how much bidding will take place. The oil industry is also having a particularly bad year, Two dozen banks have announced that they would not fund fossil fuel extraction in the Arctic refuge. And either way, it could be years before any drilling might take place, given the environmental reviews required to do so. If BLM holds an auction, but doesn't get as far as issuing leases, the new administration may be able to avoid issuing them, particularly if it concludes the program or lease sale was unlawfully adopted, said Eric Graef, an attorney with the environmental law nonprofit EarthJustice. Drilling in the refuge has been fiercely opposed for decades and remains extremely unpopular, the Yukon government in Canada has recently voiced opposition to oil exploration in the region due to the harm it could cause to the 200,000 porcupine caribou who use the coastal plain as. You can, yeah, there we go, I was going to say, you can stop it here if it's not yet. Yeah, 200,000 200, caribou, let me tell you, you can hear that like 20 miles 30 miles away on the tundra it is it is roar like nothing else where's and wwf where where's the world wildlife fund where is greenpeace why is there no big groups pushing back oh that's right they're in the fucking pockets of the corporate elites yes yes you know and and part of that is because whenever something does get a little bit of traction they flood it they flood it with money they flood it with attention they flood it with corruption every single time it, no matter yeah. what the topic is and and then they push you know oh if well you know biden could very easily do some sort of you know green stimulus but it'll go straight to the corporations it yep. won't go to the innovations that actually solve the problems it'll only going to something that is renewable budgeting <laughs> i like to speak but they really just don't try to solve the problems and you know there's so I just read an article the other day about how solar energy was the most efficient energy in the I world. I saw that article. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've you've got to understand where our planet is at in in the the scheme of things. It's it's we're prime for solar right now, especially because of what's what the damage we've already done. So um, I have another little clip later talking about some of the 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 native foods and uh, some food projects happening. But before we get there, I just thought I'd bring you a little bit about Bill Gates's new future of farming. Have you guys seen, have you seen this out in West Virginia? Looks like something no, I have not. It's, it's actually, it's just a, uh, it's not a video. It's is just this a picture a, from a... Scanner Darkly? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> this is Bill Gates. This is Bill Gates at work. He is working on a, um, it's a project known as Gates Egg One, and it's uh, formulated to be a subsidiary of the Gates Foundation, and is led by a guy named Joel Cornelius. Um, Vandana Shiva and Navdanya put out international put out an amazing article. Um, I'll share the link with you guys. In fact, because it's just it's so important that 
you know, people understand what is happening to to our crops and to our soil. And, um, you know, it's 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 amazing. People aren't realizing what they're eating, you know, and it's Thanksgiving. Like, hey, let's talk about food. I'm a chef. I am, um, you know, I've I've hunted and fished in those areas near near where those caribou um, migrate to. So it's and there's huge changes happening in in Alaska. And, you know, the, the sad part is, is I feel like the federal government has, has you know, what do they own? 60 percent of the land, I believe, is all federal land. And and they're not very good caretakers, as you can imagine. The the pieces that have been left alone are amazing, and everything else has just been completely um, abandoned. You know, they pulled out all the benefits that they used to have for the people who live there. They've pulled a lot of them out. And you know, while we do have fairly good management of a lot of the natural resources of Alaska we don't take care of it enough and we're not adjusting fast enough for the environmental changes with the damage we've done. So yeah, Gates is actually, he started actually doing this on a farm over in Carnation, Washington. Um, and he is of course pushing this heavily in Africa, Asia, and Latin America and the U S yeah. kind of gets it last um, because they, they will take his money and his technology a lot faster right. than we will. Um, but he has plenty of pushback for sure, um, you know, but they want they want, you know, small farms to be able to to pinpoint and and drop ship the chemicals as as easy as possible. And with scientific precision of, you know, flying AI. So pretty crazy. I don't think this is what's on my Thanksgiving table. How about you guys? Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> I have. I don't really trust anybody that uh, is a billionaire that's pushing chemicals. I mean, you know, I mean, we can look at the track record of, uh, you know, what's been sold to us as far as, you know, what's safe to consume, the chemicals that are in our air, our water, our soil, and um, it's bad. It's real bad. But uh, the FDA goes along with it uh, because they've been, you know, bought off. And, uh, you know, that's why, you know, really it's hard to find anything unless you go to uh, you know, maybe some mom and pop, you know, on the side of the road that's selling, you know, vegetables. But even then, it's just like it's only as good as, you know, the environment that it's grown in, which here, you know, we have all these chemicals and PCBs and everything in our, that, that don't go away. Once it's in your soil, once it's in your water, it does not go away. So, you know, what's the, what happens to the vegetables that are grown in, in that environment? And we eat that, you know, there's a reason why the cancer rates here are so high. And the birth defect rates are so high. Yeah. It's it's yeah it's it's so damaging to to public health, and that's I think probably as as a mother, um, that's the most upsetting part, is because we're not being critical of that and the impacts it has on you, especially young children. And you start seeing skyrocketing disease, and we push this and and chemical interventions instead of you know pr putting our carbon back into the soil you know, regenerating damaged ecosystems. Um, some of you guys know I've had uh, Dennis Liu on, um, who's an amazing ecology restorer and philanthropist and uh, just amazing overall human. And love. I'll have him definitely try and have him back on the show talking about the restoration eco villages because there are amazing healing things you can do. But, you know, glyphosate has a shelf, you know, half life of 30 years. <laughs> You know, people are still being born with DDT in their umbilical cord blood. <laughs> like this right. is not this has not gone away since since the in you know beginning of them. It's it's very damaging. So yeah, this this is not what you want uh, for our future of farming or for our Thanksgiving meal. But let's uh, let's see what else is happening in the world out there. How's everybody doing tonight? Thank you guys. It looks like we got some amazing people following us. That's and, doing great. Jilly, yeah. I completely agree. Totally, totally on it. And I'm glad you guys enjoy the show so far and let us know what you guys want to talk about. What is what does your future look like? I uh I just want to give a shout out to Gazar, Kevin Hester, Book Hermit, and Monotalk. Uh I think that's a friend of Red Economics there. Hi Monotalk. Good to see Welcome. you. Welcome. And Stella Steve. Um 
Let me see. Yeah, I got that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. We got that's over on uh, the Natural Progressive uh, Roar Media channel and on Roar Media, Jilly, Jeffrey Denton. Hey, Jeffrey Denton, serious. Anyway, back at you, ladies. Doing a great Mark. job. Yeah. So, anyway, I just I thought I would bring that up. You know, it kind of plays into a lot of the work and the history of what I what is very important to me and I see having tremendous impact on our actual public health and we need to talk about it especially times like now you know world especially when hunger is going to be really important what does what does healthy food look like for our most vulnerable populations because I know when I don't eat well I get very sick and I end up in the hospital and I end up costing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in health care Right. So it's not even an option for myself to to be able to do that because I won't be able to feed my family. I won't be able to work if I'm ill and, and sick from the food I'm eating. So I know I'm not alone in that. And, uh, you know, hey, spend the 70 bucks to get the organic turkey if you're going to eat a turkey. And if not, you know, there's a ton of amazing options out there. They only gave me a $15 go Walmart gift card. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You, Ch Chanda got a Walmart gift card today from the food bank. Like After I stood yeah. in a poverty line or I drove in a poverty line for two hours. But I'm working on a report for Beauty and the Boomer. I took lots of video and uh, you'll see the probably the typical average experience for somebody who's in poverty in the United States right now. Yeah, I'm I actually this week I'm collecting uh, camping gear for one of our larger um, homeless camps was burnt down in some strange circumstances here in stuff. Seattle. I've got some stuff. Awesome. Yeah. If anybody, anybody in uh, the Puget Sound area um, or, you know, in your own area, wherever you are, you know, everybody's got a little bit of extra something, another, I know I'm always trying to get rid of things and, you know, there's a lot of people that could, you know, use stuff for a new job. Or I've been thinking about a, maybe a mutual aid link somewhere on our website where all of our viewers and I mean, we can just pull oh, together. Yeah. You know, we have those on Facebook. If somebody needs something, they just ask for it. You know, I just think that that would be a cool concept for our website. Yeah, for sure. Actually, I'm very excited to start working on that uh hopefully this weekend and we should have some cool stuff up for giving Tuesday, which I think is really important. Um, but yeah, anybody in Puget Sound every year, I am, I'll drive around. I'll pretty much drive anywhere um, to go pick stuff up and I hope to make a big donation because it is getting a little chilly. In fact, my heat's uh, kicking on. <laughs> it's been cold, brutal cold. And we have more people out on the street. Seattle was, it had the fourth largest, uh, homeless population uh, four years ago, but I think that that has just gone through the roof. I think we're probably at second or third now. Uh, it's like nothing I've ever seen in, in my whole entire existence on the West Coast. Well, and the other thing about that too, you know, is now usually the coldest months of the year are February um, through March. Climate change, welcome. Yeah, yeah. and uh, everybody's going to be losing out on their unemployment at the end of the year, and they've done nothing about that. So Merry Christmas, you know, day after Christmas, get kicked off your unemployment. Exactly. And then, you know, watch watch some of our programs get cut at the meantime, you know, austerity cuts. Yeah, yeah. And we'll be, uh, you know, just cruising right into the next epidemic in the springtime. The I can't wait. Are you excited? left? I think the only thing really left for them to cut is the SNAP program that feeds over 14 million Americans right now because they already cut Meals on Wheels. They've cut they've cut so many programs. There's just there's already there isn't shit left. Well, and how many more small businesses are, are closing down? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the restaurant industry here in Seattle has been incredibly hit. I've seen, oh. you know businesses that have been you know james beard award-winning restaurants that have been open for 20 years close their doors they're just like can't do it can't do it and and that has an impact not only on of course you know on unemployment and you know families that are hustling working i've worked 30 years in the restaurant industry not always because i wanted to <laughs> i do love food but you know i mean i i had to work to feed my kids and well, let's admit the wages in the food industry are shit unless you're a four star chef or something. You're making pretty much minimum wage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I started bartending and, and serving tables. I, wor I worked front of the house most of that 35 years because I couldn't afford to be behind. Right. You know, and and due to health stuff, I couldn't I couldn't ever get out of poverty enough to buy my own place. You, you know, I'm sure I'm not alone enough. in that. 
You just weren't working hard enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got I to get my bootstraps stuck out of a muskeg here. Um, but yeah, let's let's run this little clip. Let's see what uh, what we've got going forward for us in the in the new year. I'm mildly like clammy over it. God, I hope this isn't the one I think it is. <laughs> well, first of all, um, uh, we'll see if that comes forward. And secondly, it's important that people who are in the greatest need get it. I wouldn't hesitate to get the vaccine. But I also want to set uh, um, an example. Uh, and uh, But I, I wouldn't hesitate to get the vaccine if, in fact, Dr. Dr. Fauci and these two organizations, whether it's Moderna or Pfizer, who have been extremely responsible, conclude that it is, uh, it is safe and, uh, and, and able to be done. Look, the only reason people question the vaccine now is because of Donald Trump. That's the reason why people are questioning the vaccine, because all the things he says and doesn't say, whether it's is it truthful, is it not truthful, the exaggerations. I think we're on a clear path now. We're on a clear path where the international community and national leaders uh, in the scientific community have focused on these two vaccines. They appear to be ready for prime time, ready to be used. And if that in continues along those roads, I would take the vaccine. Thank you. Clearly, it's one of the most vulnerable people and important people. Shepard Smith <laughs> here. Thanks for watching CNBC. Oh, oh, shut the hell up, you asshat. Fans of the CIA, anyone? <laughs> that was an added bonus. No. Yeah. Didn't Fox fire him and CNBC <laughs> hired him? Uh, Shepard Smith. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that wasn't the clip. Thank God. We've got it for Beauty and the Boomer. Stay tuned. <laughs> I like that face you froze it at, though. We should cut that and do some animations with it. I think Biden can we'll shut the hell up. That. Too. Leave it right there. We'll deal with that after the show. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what we're looking for. To you know, that's that's his economic plan. How you guys feel about that? You know, <laughs> are your bootstraps lifted up now? We're so well, I mean, he already told me he has no sympathy for uh, you know my generation. So you know, of course, I'm totally on board with whatever Joe Biden tells me I should do. I mean, he can't <laughs> even remember who he's running against or what room he's in. But uh, you know, I can trust him. He seems trustworthy, yeah. right? And just trustworthy, like those companies called Pfizer, you know, and Moderna making, you know, 40, 50 million dollars. Fair. They oh. haven't done Joe Biden wrong yet. It's only the rest of us that they've screwed over. So, yeah. Oh, well, the best Joe part Biden is. has a pretty high opinion of him. He, he won't remember it when they do screw him over. You know. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm. I, it's so funny to me that that those words he chose too about Trump, like we're all just been hanging on Trump's every last tweet so hard that none of us can think for ourselves. And that tide's just magically going to shift because Uncle Joe says it's safe. Oh. It's pretty bizarre. I had um, I saw an article this week that the um, was it the UK government, UK government has um, put out a bid for 1.5 million uh, euros for an AI program to monitor vaccine oh, adverse reactions. Fuck. They expect the the adverse reactions to be so high and so overwhelm capacity, and mind you, only about 10% are actually ever reported. So if you can imagine that, that you would get uh, have AI tracking your uh, vaccine reactions worldwide. What now? What are an adverse reaction? Are you going to grow a second head? I mean, that's that what's scary to me. We're going to we're a whole population of guinea pigs. Like, oh well, let's see. You didn't die, but sorry, you're going to have that rash for the rest of your life. Uh, rash is definitely on the side effects list. <laughs> so you know, whatever I say to people, you know, I I encourage everybody to to do their own research um, and ask for the uh, vaccine ingredients list. Anytime anybody ever offers that and make sure you talk to your elderly parents because they are at risk um, for 
unnecessary medicines at all stages of their life, unfortunately. You won't realize they have a drug addiction or a drug problem until it's far too late to bring them back from it. And that happens often. So you need to talk about what the, is in these, you know, the average, I think Americans on 17 pharmaceuticals right now. Well, they, they grew up in a generation that went to the doctor and here, take these pills, they'll make you better. But we didn't think big pharma was was cannibalizing and preying on us like they are now. And they're still in that MSNBC uh, mentality. So I don't even know how I reach anybody in my family. And I've been doing this for years and years and years, you know, like you can't take the flu shot, you know, I don't know how to reach them. We're Tylenol. So Stop taking Tylenol. I know, Stop I'm taking terrible. Tylenol with a flu shot. Like don't take the medicine. It's not good for you. It's, you yeah, know, and, and there's plenty of life saving things. Yeah. They're not even doing the research on it anymore. When it comes to us being exposed to certain chemicals, I mean, you think that they would be, you know, uh, or, or medicines, you know, they just, you think they jump at the chance to see, you know, what, uh, you know, it is uh, what effect that would have on us. But what it really comes down to is they make more money not researching it whatsoever. And then it'll take decades before people will find out why they're sick. And then decades more after that. And by that point, all the sick people uh, will die off. And it's much easier to pay for a dead body than it is to pay for somebody's medical treatment. Absolutely. So they will postpone it. And they've been shown to postpone all these, you know, uh, class action lawsuits against these, uh, you know, pharmaceutical companies, chemical companies, because it's it's a lot cheaper to pay for somebody's funeral than it is for their health care. It is. It is. In fact, you know, look at look at Dow Chemical right and right across the river from you and look at and look at how much just a few, you know, the the few things that actually are reported, the few things that are, you know, brought forward in a court of law have been millions and millions of dollars. You know, Dwayne Johnson initial settlement was two hundred million dollars from Monsanto, which is now Bayer, which is now part of, of course, Johnson and Johnson that's also developing vaccines, developing you There's know, no monopolies. There's in no fact monopolies. I got I got a text I got a text this week and it's pretty funny. I got a text asking me if I um had been exposed to asbestos from the talc powder from Johnson and Johnson, like there's, there's class action lawsuits above and beyond. So you could get your two dollars and thirty two cent check. I have, I've gotten a few of those. Absolutely, <laughs> I think the last one was with my Wells Fargo uh, breach of security check. Yeah, I got a Verizon or, one. I think I got twenty bucks. I was like, yeah, mine was big like one. I hope it cost them a lot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, that's it happens all the time and we don't question it. I have to sit there and doctor appointment after doctor appointment and say, I'm not taking your pharmaceuticals. I'm not taking your pharmaceuticals. Me too. Me too. I'm not here because I'm in pain and I want to be numb. I'm here to find out what's going on and you better be able to talk to me about it. You know, but the elderly, the young, they don't get that. You know, they don't get that level of care or treatment or initiative to to question that authority well so. and it's by design because our healthcare system has been uh it's a cadillac care you got money you'll get care and you know they've made it now to where when you go to the doctor it used to be okay well what's wrong and you would oh my, you know it hurts when i do this I, I feel sick when i do this now it's one thing pick one thing i don't care if you got four things wrong with you you got to get four different appointments to come in and they don't want to find the root cause of why you're sick they really don't i mean okay testing they can make a shit ton of money off of the testing but when it comes down to it they just want to throw some pharmaceuticals at you and have you come back in every month uh, you know for a full charge to get refills on those pharmaceuticals that's just the way our healthcare system is anymore yeah we can't even get into like what they do to women when you go in and you complain about something yeah you know that legit in they, your head. they dismiss you because you're just being emotional rational and weak you know irrational and weak and it's just like no i know my body i know when something yeah. is wrong with this and so many women go untreated because doctors just simply won't listen to them i mean exactly. it feels like the 1800s it's yeah. like, you know treat me for hysteria you know yeah exactly <laughs> i yeah exactly i had I had an ablation done when I was young. I don't know if you know what that is, but uh, anyways, they didn't tell me it would put me into surgical menopause. I was 36 years old. So I'm going to the doctor by 40 going, I'm losing my mind. I'm having night sweats. I'm, oh, you're too young for menopause. I just looking at you, you, I can tell you don't need hormones because I know how to put on a makeup. 
I, I look f like a female, so I don't need hormones. That was their take on it. And I suffered for six years before finally my mother grabbed me, took me to the pharmacy and said, here, you need over the counter hormones, you know, and save my life. But could a doctor do that for me? No, I probably went to 15 damn visits and got nothing. I, I pretty much go in with a laundry list of here's the tests I'm looking for and this is what I need and this is what's happening. And if they can't converse with that, I'm like, great, I'll find somebody else. That's awesome, Amber. That's why I need to do it. But it's... it's I just gave up. I've given up on Western medicine because all they've done is dope me out for 25 years. I finally got through that on my own. Thank you very much from no help from them. And now every time I go back there, it's just like you're either treated like you're seeking drugs or uh, you're given some bullshit pharmaceutical that doesn't do anything or makes you sicker. Exactly. And I can, I can go down to my uh, local naturopath office and spend $20 exactly. and see a homeopathy expert and four or five students and get treatment. Yeah. And get relief. Yeah. And, and actually, you know, have, have positive impact. But those are pseudosciences. You need to be listening to Western medicine. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, and, and, you know, science is God now. You have to listen to it. It is the all knowing, irrefutable, um, uncorruptible, uncorruptible medium now so why, i mean like they're slowly making nature uh illegal yes. i mean that's why that that cannabis has been illegal for so long uh i mean it's because yes it's a natural uh cure to a lot of these things and 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 all these you know natural treatments i mean that's what we were using before the things that we're buying in a pharmacy are synthetic versions of what we were using prior to that yes. they've, done, they've made that yes. illegal and now we've just got to keep I, you know i fight for kratom from them I am a, an advocate for Kratom. I've been fighting to make Kratom legal across the country for seven years. There is pharmaceutical refugees, and that's what I call them. Because where do you go when you've had 20 years of chemical treatments from pharmaceuticals, and then you got to still treat all your aches and pains and illnesses, but you don't want to do it with Western medicine. And so I pivoted to Chinese medicine and uh, Eastern medicines, and Kratom saved my life. I am not on a MAP program as Suboxone or any any of you know, these other drugs that they're lifelong drugs that they're rolling out from big pharma to cure an epidemic that they unleashed on our damn country. But yet uh, lobbyists are coming in and crushing us because we want to tote an all natural plant and tea to help you versus, you know, take this drug for the rest of your life. Which goes back to Bill Gates's version of farming, which is a patented process, scientifically proven, studied with his, you know, cooked books data behind it so that he can patent it for himself and control it. And that's, yep. that's all it is. That's all it's ever been. And it's been, you know, left unchecked and unrampant. It's destroyed our, you know, higher education system. Hell, it's in elementary school. It's an elementary school. We are now pushing the transhumanism, the, the, you know, genetically modified foods, the greenwashing of every single, you know, type of diet or preference for food or organic farming. You've seen all the large corporations come in and buy out small mom and pops, you know, any of your, uh, you know, labels like Burt's Bees, Burt's Bees is owned by Clorox. If you don't oh, know that, that and you're buying it for your kids thinking, oh, this is healthy, you know, no, it, it's literally owned by Clorox. It's, it's not okay. And all of these chemicals add up to the point where they can't pinpoint and say it's, you know, company A or company B because right. you've been exposed by both companies for 40 years. That's an excellent point because that's what happens here. Between all the different poisonings that we get between the chemical companies, the coal mining companies, our food, our air, our water, our soil, it's just like, well, who knows who poisoned you? You know, it's like maybe yeah, all of y'all yeah. should uh, pitch in, you know, yeah, prove yeah, it. I mean, it's it, you can't isolate it because you're being poisoned by so many people. It's like, you know, it's like Julius Caesar. He was stabbed by, you know, how many people? It's like, right. well, well, prove how, prove who did it. You know, that, that's where we're at right now with, you know, what we put in our bodies, uh, you know, consciously, unconsciously, whether it's going to a store or just walking outside and taking a breath of air. I mean, that happened in the city of Nitro where they were pumping stuff into the air and everybody was dropping dead from cancers housewives every time they swept the floors they were 
uh, you know, dusting up that, that dust that was going up and they were breathing it. And they couldn't figure out why all these housewives were just dying of cancers back in the 60s. So, I mean, and then it came out later that they knew all along that they were the ones poisoning them. Wow. But, you know, cheaper for the funeral. Absolutely. Right. Just just shove us to our little graves and be quiet. And, you know, we won't, won't talk about what we've, you know, the glyphosate levels that are 700 times, you know, allowable limit in your Cheerios. It's fine. Or, your, you know, baby food. Which is made out of oatmeal. I've had a problem with Cheerios long before the whole glyphosate thing because it's full of trisodium phosphate. Go ahead, clean, eat that window cleaner, you know? <laughs> I learned that. Try to years. avoid trisodium phosphate. Oh, my gosh. It's an harder everything. one. Yeah. But it's good for your heart. Didn't you see the commercial? It's good for your cholesterol. <laughs> Cleans you right out. <laughs> along with that paint, you know? Yeah. Not good. Would you like to play this... Uh, this is our intermission for the night. Or, I mean, Yay. we're past intermission, but this is your uh, good laugh for heading into the weekend. Oz and I brought this this morning. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I didn't want, I was, I was busy this morning, so I didn't get a chance to watch. So let's bookend, bookend our Friday okay. with the, you know. No, it's awesome. I think we're going to bring it to Beauty and the Boomer again tomorrow. Oh, good. Yeah. Let's just keep it going every day, every day. That's, that's our hook. <laughs> it's a YouTube video, so it hasn't been taken down, so. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, here's a fun one. This is a, another uh, West Coast story. I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't bring any uh, coal country stories uh, this evening, unfortunately. But I'll try and bring those into the mix for you, Stevie. But this is uh, okay. this is in my former former home of the Oregon coast. Homeowners on the Oregon coast are fighting the imminent arrival of a tech giant on their shores. Facebook is asking permission to install an undersea cable that stretches all the way from Southeast Asia oh, to the shit. small community of Tierra del Mar. Huh. As Fox 12 Simon Gutierrez explains, oh, while the project could bring faster speeds to Facebook users, people who live in the neighborhood are worried about the impact on their quiet beachfront community. Well, folks who live along this piece of coastline just south of Tillamook are concerned about a couple of different things, chief among them noise and the impact of heavy equipment, and they're starting to feel powerless to stop it. So Facebook's property starts about here. Lene Rutledge walks with us along the stretch of beach in front of a piece of property that could soon be home to a massive infrastructure project, a landing spot for an undersea cable owned and operated by Facebook. The industrial drilling will be right in here. Rutledge and several of her neighbors have been fighting to stop the project, but last week lost an appeal to a planning commission decision to allow it to go ahead. Tillamook County Commissioners voted to side with the Planning Commission. The county is saying we think it's more important for a corporate interest to be able to come onto this property and do this than to value that the entire community said no. Rutledge and her neighbors are concerned about the heavy equipment and deep drilling required to bring the cable to shore. This is going to bring in huge pieces of industrial equipment. It's going to have vibration which could impact people's property, their um, foundations, their septic systems, our groundwater. In its permit application, the company tasked with installing the cable, Edge Cable Holdings, doesn't address potential impacts to neighboring properties, but says there will be no permanent impacts to wetlands or waters of the United States, and no long-term impacts to the seafloor. The company, though, does acknowledge there are several threatened or endangered animal species in the area that could be affected by this construction. We reached out to the Tillamook County Board of Commissioners asking them to explain their decision to allow the project to move forward, but we were told there would be no public comment until after the appeals process has been completed. We feel 
like our commissioners have sold us down the line, I do personally. As for Rutledge, she says she'll keep fighting the project, but is starting to lose hope. You feel shut out of the process? Oh, easily. Um, and as if we were not even valued. Our neighbors here still have at least one more opportunity to appeal this decision with the State Land Use Board of Appeals. They have a couple of weeks to file that paperwork. In Tillamook County, Simon Gutierrez, Fox 12, Oregon. Um, oh. So did they show Haystack Rock there? They're going to have to take out Haystack Rock to put that cable in. Oh, that <laughs> But, but I, I have to say, as long as they don't fuck up my Tillamook cheese, I'm okay with it. Just go ahead and kill all those species and ruin the environment. It's cool. I just want my cheese. It's that just is, a whale ground. Don't worry. That is just one of the most beautiful beaches on the western seaboard. And I, it's, just thinking about them tearing it up just rips my heart off. Yeah, because, and the other thing, like, you know, you're on sand. Those roads, Highway 101 has a hard enough time staying yeah. in one piece as it is without a bunch of heavy yeah. equipment and machinery. Every road project I've ever seen on the Oregon coast ends up with some kind of landslide, yeah. a pit, you know, I mean, like, you know, one lane roads, you know, and that, and it, and I lived on Highway 101. It's gnarly at times and it's a beautiful beach and it's a huge beach. And the whales come in when they're going between Alaska and California or Hawaii and the breeding grounds. They stop there. They stop there and they um, roll in the sand and they, they knock all the barnacles off. Yeah. And, and they're just everywhere, all through there, bringing their whole family. And now you'd have this, you know, giant tunnel and, you know, fishing nets would get stuck on it. And, like, I just can't even, you know. Why can't they use satellite? And that was a question that... Um I'm seeing in the chat. I that was my first thought. Why can't they just use the satellite like everybody else? Yeah, I I good question. I, I've actually you know, and the, the bigger part of this too. I I do believe the appeal might have had some luck. In fact, I'll, I'll have to follow up. My girlfriend um, lives down there um, in that county as well, and actually used to work for the county, and um, no longer works for the county. Um, partly because of some of these decisions and how they have shut out the public and the participation right there. And it's really, really important that you, you know, permitting, you have to watch permitting no matter where you are, no matter if you don't know of anything coming in your neighborhood, keep an eye at your city council. It's all online. Just follow that permitting office like mad because you will be shocked at some of the things that are just shooed right on in. No comment. Nobody knows about them. And by the time they do, it's too late. Yep. And that happens over and over again. Um, this is what I brought. It was in relation to the article earlier about Arctic drilling. Um, it's Native American History Month, of course. Um, and they are doing a screening of the film Gather. And I'm very excited about it. I think it's insanely appropriate for, uh, you know, our Thanksgiving celebration and giving thanks. And, you know, like much like I do not celebrate Columbus Day, um, you know, my my family celebration for Thanksgiving is a little different probably than most because of, of my experiences living in Alaska and, and Native heritage. Our ancestors saw the world end once. That whole life was gone. Now we're on the other side of the apocalypse. The different wrongs that have been done to Native peoples are just so sickening. I mean, they even had slogans like, kill the Indian, save the man. That's genocide. Millions of people all across the Americas systematically wiped out, starting here on the East Coast. That's the reason that we don't have that relationship with some of those traditional foods anymore. What's popping? I see onions. Yeah, we have uh, red onions, yellow onions. Matcha, almond squash. You ready? We're salmon people. What do we do if our salmon don't come back? What I've come to understand is if we want to maintain our culture, then we have to have buffalo as a vital part of our communities. What we're doing is reintroducing our young people to the land, the food, and our traditional ways of healing. Working at the farm has brought a lot of healing to my life. I've been clean 16 years, June now. 
I learned to heal through harvesting our traditional food. We're celebrating Apache Foodways in a kitchen that was built by Apaches for Apaches. It's this movement among all indigenous people that they're finally, they're listening. And it's like music when you hear the drum, it's calling you. And it's Mother Earth, Mother Earth's heart's beating. And she's talking to all of us that we need to do something. It's inside first, I thought. Before there was corn, and it's a disease. a good movie so yeah they're doing a free screening and uh, i put the link in the chat to everyone i hope you guys can check it out um you know these are these are important things i've i've started making my kids watch my documentaries with me <laughs> no that's smart that's very smart guys this you know you know i work really close with the indigenous community here and i think it's so freaking important that we support their voices at now because they have treaties that they can hold the government accountable with i think that that gives them um you know unique leverage and so i feel like that they can accomplish a lot more than say greenpeace or any of these others so anytime 100%. yeah i just ugh, so terrible so terrible what we've done i call it happy national uh genocide of a people day you know i walk into thanksgiving I'm like happy national genocide of a people day and my family's like oh god she had us here you know <laughs> <laughs> wake people up yeah you have to, you have to have these conversations and you have to you know learn about other people's culture learn about their their traditions learn about their foods where where if you don't live somewhere where you were born or where you're from you should know what they eat you know it's not out of a box at the gas station or a cup of noodles it's you know there's traditional foods and the more traditional foods and traditional medicines and that culture and language that you preserve, um, the better off humanity will be around the world. Like it's, it's so important to me. It's so important. So I just wanted to bring, bring that through. And I actually, I had another article, but I didn't have any video clip for it, but um, there's an amazing story out right now. And Emin it's called Eminence Magazine. They also have a podcast um, by Robin Wall, Kimmer, um, not Kilmer, thankfully. Um, it's called The Corn Tastes Better on the Honor System. And it is one of the most beautiful pieces of writing, um, just talking about the story of corn. And if you haven't seen the movie King Corn, highly recommend watching that. Corn is the stable grain on the planet, on the planet, without a doubt. It is also the most toxic, it is the most chemically treated, the most genetically treated, and we don't make those connections and we don't understand where corn came from and the story and power that was corn far before, you know, companies like Monsanto and, and chem China. So it's really important to, to learn some of these traditional ways because we may be back there soon. Who knows? I don't know. I, I like to make sure that, that my kids know what's growing in the yard and how to, you know, heal a bug bite. Um, you know, what to do if somebody falls and, or, you know, starts throwing up, where to find willow bark if you need salicylic acid. You know, all those pieces of, the, of medicine and traditional healing and knowledge are so vital and we've got to keep passing that down and not going to the doctor. You know, we're not, clearly we're not going to get Medicare for all in this administration. So we better learn to do something better on our own. And that's kind of my push to that. Um, it doesn't quite go into the graphic behind us, however, which is the open source. Uh, Franklin brought this for us. This is a reminder to look for open source software. It's um, very important that other people, people who can read code, can look at the code and that it's open and that there's not proprietary pieces being hidden or back doors and we, we need to make sure we have end-to-end -end encrypted and open source software and that your children are too. Our children and the elderly, again, kind of like other things, are at risk for not being up to speed and knowing how their data and information is being targeted and used to monetize against them. So it's, it's one of the big pieces and pushes I have in the world and goes hand in hand with the chemical cartel, doesn't it? 
Do you, yeah, I, do you I love about- that. I love that meme I sent you the other day that said, "My favorite way to online shop is to just call out things that I want and wait for it to show up in my newsfeed." <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, I I I I used to try and like trick the trick the algorithms at time and and you know just it's ask- spooky. Say a random thing and it'll yeah. show up. It is spooky. I need I know I need panda glasses or you know whatever <laughs> like I need monkey socks and you know boom everything you look great right. now I'm gonna be getting ads for monkey socks all night <laughs> it's my I phone like really cute. hard enough I like the really cute way that they ask you too it's like do you want customized you know tailored ads and it's yeah. just like no I don't I do not want you spying on me that means you have to know me to tailor your ads to me so please I'm going to opt out of that one. No, I'll get some random ad for whatever. So, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you drive by the Wendy's and you're getting Wendy's coupons an hour later. Oh, I mean, due to capitalism, I don't have enough money to spend on whatever it is they're selling me anyway. So, <laughs> right? go ahead and take that, to, take that to, to Bill Gates or whoever has the money because I ain't got it. <laughs> exactly. He has no need for those those little things. This one I brought, uh, this clip is an oldie but a goodie. Um, just thought I'd remind people oh, of, of where I we've been. Yeah, Bextra. I've I've Baxter, taken Bextra before. Yeah, okay. All right. And go. Well, Pfizer, the drug maker, will pay a $2.3 billion civil penalty in connection with illegal prescription drug promotions. Justice Department Associate Attorney General Tom Pirelli holding a news conference right now. You see him speaking there on your screen live in Washington. He's announcing the terms of that deal. Now, the allegations involved in the suit dealt with the marketing of its recalled Bextra painkiller and three other medicines, including the pain pill Lyra the Geodon schizophrenia treatment, and Zyvox, which is used for infections. Pfizer, which makes those drugs, will plead guilty to one criminal count stemming from the improper promotion of Bextra, and they'll pay a $1.3 billion penalty. Uh, overall, that drug settlement, as you see there, $2.3 billion. No problem. I, I You know, I always had this dream that they took... Um, drug drug names like it was kind of like some hurricane uh you know naming app but like combined with ai and a couple science fiction novels how do you how do we get the names of of pharmaceuticals anybody in the chat know anybody watching any of you ladies i don't know it's 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 very strange i it's always been like the strangest like I, do they have a little think tank of you know people crunching away at things i don't know star I trek just, uh, star trek reruns <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's 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 a, it's got to be like a met you know like maybe it's some formula like we take the first three letters off this page in a book and the last three letters off that page and we mash them together till it sounds good it's it's got to be like, like the same some way they uh, name bills yeah. I thought it was their corporate owners. It's like because there's so many conglomerates, it's like they just jam their names. Snorky, all Snorky, answer that question for us in the chat. You're the wise one here tonight, aren't you? Snorky? I know. I was like, Snork, why are they using a cable and not satellites? Yeah. Come on, Snork. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight. I appreciate you all. I hope you have a wonderful holiday. I will be back in two weeks. And uh, I hope you enjoy the show and welcome everybody watching on uh, on our new channel, Progressive Natural Progressive and Roar Media Live. And hope you hit the smash button. Uh, stay tuned for some of the cool things we've got coming up. We've got such an amazing group of people that we are working with right now. I am so excited to see what becomes of this amazing power of women and diversity and just really genuine amazing strong voices i i'm i can't wait it's going to be amazing and thank you all for being on this journey with us because we've got to protect the media we've got to protect the future and we need to keep eyes on what's coming for us so you know third eye here third eye in the middle keep keep all eyes calcified (laughs) (laughs) yeah stop drinking the fluoridated water come on chanda like damn it cut cut loose in the mushrooms with some woods and some you know spring water Uh, you gotta shake out the cobwebs 
Carla, I need to go to Oregon. <laughs> That's a retirement plan. Remember, we're, we're gonna we're gonna start an, an old folks home for uh, aging hippies. And and if you've been to the Oregon Country Fair, there's a spot yeah. <laughs> in our retirement facility for you. Uh, go find some mushrooms. I'll just be out there wandering around <laughs> picking mushrooms. Is there an age limit? Because uh, I mean, yeah. hell no. <laughs> yeah, no, there ain't Can we no. We start age. now. <laughs> no. But we are so glad to have your voice because I feel like your generation is so underrepresented in so many facets of these, you know, movements. I I, I hate saying progressive anymore. It's we're just we're fighting <sighs> for humanity. We're you're, we're humanists. I'm a humanist. Yeah, I mean, if you look in the news anytime, I mean, I mean, we're getting blamed for killing every single industry. I mean, it has nothing to do with the fact that we have no jobs, no money, no opportunity, no education, no health care. Right. Um, housing prices are through the roof. Yeah. Uh, but, but how's you your know, debt? Because of the avocados. Yeah, <laughs> avocado toast. Yeah, I've got, I've got a pile of avocados off screen that you can't see here. So <laughs> I, I have an addiction. What can I say? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Stevie, it's so great to have you on. I look forward to having you on. I want to bring you on the Accidental Activist. I know we can have an amazing conversation. We have so much in in common. I find you a very kindred spirit. So I can't wait to just sit down and talk with you. Yeah, we are, oh, we are very much looking forward to working with you. And um, yeah, everybody say say some final words and have a lovely weekend. Uh, just uh, keep learning, stay aware, and be kind to each other. Yeah, be kind to each other. You know, today I was in that that austerity line, and the, everybody is so short and just wants to, you know, like cut each other off. And I'm next, I'm next, and it's just like, come on, people, we have to help each other. All I've, together. I find myself holding doors open for people. I'm like, let me grab that, and like, people are so like. I know everybody tell they're afraid to move yeah. and they're afraid to come near. And I'm just like, let me get that for you. Right. Be kind. No. Be kind. I love that message, Judy. Yeah. Share, share some compassion. Thank you all very much. Feel free to take us out whenever you're ready. Thank you very much, Oz, man behind the curtain. And feel free to again hit the like button. And uh we'll have we'll have some chatting on very soon and keep oh, an eye tomorrow out. Night. Tomorrow night, Beauty and the Boomer. Tomorrow night, Beauty and the Boomer, and got the, the the nightly dive, and I'm hoping I will get to come on Friday morning dive too, since it's not a work day for me. So excited! Thanks for having us tonight. Good night, ladies. Thank you. Great show. Night, Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>